Today, the greatest jazz musician never heard, the father of jazz, the father of the syncopated rhythm, Buddy Bolden. Who is Buddy Bolden? Really, most of you, if you're not involved in jazz, might be going, who's Buddy Bolden? And honestly, I understand, I get it, and it's not a surprise. Buddy Bolden was born in 1877. He died in the 1930s. He was active as a musician for about a decade, a little under. And he spent the bulk of his life committed to an asylum for what we would refer to as schizophrenia. He played in the Tremaine and Storyville area of New Orleans. He was a band leader. He was an enigma. His bandmates said that he could play louder than someone who was miked. He had a sound, and I mean, it was referred to as the big sound that everyone started to emulate. So let's talk about the real reason that this man, who there is only one picture of, and there's even a little bit of controversy around that picture. We'll talk about that. No recordings is pointed to and said by many players, that's where my sound came from. That's where this came from. The big issue with this picture is that either way you flip it, there are musicians holding their instruments the wrong way. Now this is at the turn of the century, jazz players who were traditionally untrained, not classically trained. So you could have them holding the instrument the opposite direction, a bass player holding it wrong, a guitar player holding it wrong, a valve trombone player holding it wrong. So the big mystery is really answered by the fact that they did not have classical training, so they held it the way that worked for them. So Buddy Bolden was referred to as the father, the inventor of jazz. He gave us the big four, the syncopated big four beat. Bum, 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 bum. And right now, you're watching me and it's like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm starting to get into it. He was an improviser. He was the first to combine the sounds of the street, the whinnies, the calls, all those little things that people would do with their instruments, the special effects, as it were. And he would add that to gospel. And you would get what he would call hot music. He also, as I had said previously, had a huge sound, but he could also play so quietly that you would hear the dancer's feet. And this was a music of the people. Of the people, by the people, for the people. No, I mean, it was just, that was the music. That was what was going on in New Orleans, in Storyville, in Tremaine. He, he was a moment in time and he would improvise over lines and all the elements that were Dixie and jazz were coming out here. Now, there are no recordings. So all we know is what's been passed down through not even a written tradition, but an oral tradition and an auditory tradition. You can draw a line from Buddy Bolden to King Oliver to Louis Armstrong. And 
you can kind of get a feel for how he played through listening to the power that Louis could get. But without a recording, how do we know? How do we know what started all this? How do we get it? So forgive me. I'm going to put on my researcher's hat for a second. I'm going to say, how are we going to find out about Buddy Bolden? Well, what we do is we start looking. It's like investigating ripples on a pond without seeing the stone that hit the pond. We know that the ripples have radiated out, so we follow them back, looking for what caused it. And while we get close, we'll never know what exactly caused it. Now we have stories of people that played with him. We have performers who say, I play like Buddy Bolton. And there's not a whole lot else. I mean, there was presumably, allegedly, a wax cylinder, one recording. What happened to that? There is no, any way, anywhere that, to have a clue. But without that recording, without that primary source, all we have to go on are testimonies and personal reporting. So he was said to be loud and have a mastery of the horn. He was said to be able to hold the whole song in his head and create the whole arrangement, sing it out to his players. He was said to be virtuosic. I'm sorry, virtuosic. And I really am sorry that the first recording we have of jazz is not of him, but a decade later of a caricature of what jazz was. And I know that's really a harsh review of that piece, but It is, it's a caricature of what jazz was. An over-exaggeration of the playing. 